Our next topic is sexuality and sexual dysfunctions. A person has a sexual identity. This is determined by the person's genetics. It is in the genes. This cannot be changed. Then there is a person's gender identity. This is determined by the mind. And usually by the age of three, it is usually determined already. And it is a biological trait not related to culture, parents, or religion, all of these. Gender dysphoria is the different types of um, gender and sexuality there is. And the most common type is heterosexuals. This is when uh, people are attracted to the opposite sex. Homosexuality is when the people are attracted to their own sex. Transgender is when a person is born as one sexual identity, but they wish to live as a different gender. So they would do surgery, they would go through medical interventions to match their gender identity. So it could be a boy who wants to be a woman, shares son, transition like this. There's a lot of transitions that we can see these days, hear of actually. Now it's also important to know when the child is in the adolescent period, there's usually a lot of experimenting. And once they decide the gender that they want to be, they can't just go get surgery. They would have to go through psychotherapy to make sure that this is the choice that they want to make for life because most of these surgeries are irreversible. So after that, they can go for medical and surgical treatment. Transvestites are people who would cross-dress. So basically, it would be a male who dresses as a female. There's a very famous cross-dresser called RuPaul. He has something called RuPaul and his drag race. Next, th this gender dysphoria is not a mental disorder. But it becomes a disorder if the person's functioning is affected for more than six months. If the person is not happy with the uh, who they are, and it significantly affects their functioning, then it becomes a disorder that may need psychotherapy. Let's talk a bit about psychosexual disorders or paraphilic disorders. These are disorders that are recurrent and causes a person to be sexually aroused. And these last more than six months and cause impairment in the level of a person's functioning. Now, the most common type is pedophilia. This is when an older person would sexually assault someone younger, someone who has not yet reached puberty, basically a child. This is the most common form. And these people would lose interest in that child after they reach puberty. They are. This is common in mostly in males, but it is found in females as well. You will hear news of females being arrested, getting pregnant by uh, students that they teach, all of these. Then another type is transvestic fetishes. This is when they would derive pleasure from wearing clothes of the opposite sex. So a male would wear the underwear of a female and go to work. So the underwear is inside, the person would wear the normal jeans and go to work. But they get sexual gratification from doing this. And these are mostly heterosexuals who do this. Then there's another type called exhibitionism. This is when they would expose their genitals to strangers to get arousal. Voyeurism is pleasure from watching others. So these are the tom uh, peeping toms. Sadism. Sadism is pleasure derived from others' pain. 
they cause pain to others and that sexually gratifies them masochism is when they get abused when they are going through pain they get a lot of sexual pleasure and these two usually go together as snm fetish fetishism is when there's a focus on objects when they are sexually gratified by objects such as shoes lighting pictures on the wall etc fraturism is a very common disorder seen in males who travel in public transport where they would rub their genitals against a fully clothed woman and they would ejaculate zoophilia is when there is an animal involved in the sexual practice coprophilia is sex and def- defecation urophilia is sex with urination necrophilia is sex with dead people hypoxophilia is when they get pleasure when they are being choked or when they are going through stages of hypoxia now the std of highest incidence is hpv and highest prevalence is her- herpes simplex virus 2 and chlamydia is the most commonly reported std in women gonorrhea in men also women do not have a refractory period between org- orgasms masturbation This is a normal activity from puberty to old age. This is sometimes seen in children. This is usually normal in the sense that they don't gain any sexual gratification. They just do it. But there is a chance that they would have seen it somewhere and are mimicking the behavior. So how is it? it considered abnormal how when is masturbation considered abnormal it is considered abnormal if it interferes with sexual or occupational functioning otherwise it's normal next homosexuality this is not a disorder but there are cases where the person would be ego dystonic if they are gay and they're not happy about it A psychiatrist will have to work with them to make make them feel better about their choice. If they are egocentric, if they are gay and happy about it, then that's fine. There are very feminine boys in uh, boys who are more likely to grow grow up homosexual. So they would play with dolls. They would have a high pitched voice. They would act like girls. They would not sit on the toilets. Sorry, they would not pee standing up. And tomboys. is the opposite where females act as boys they would have their hair cut short they would not pee sitting down they would do they would wear what boys wear all of these kind of behavior sexuality and aging sexual interest does not decline significantly with age so as you grow older it does not decline it's just that they go through physiological changes such as they would have slow erections longer refractory periods between sexual activities and they would need more stimulation in women there would be vaginal dryness vaginal thinning and these can be these symptoms can be reduced with estrogen replacement next let's talk about sexual disorders this four main types there's the disorders of desire if they are hypoactive they are not really interested in sex sexual aversion when there's no desire to have sex then disorders of arousal and this is when there's some sort of a psychiatric problem such as depression stress anxiety sexual abuse or some sort of hormonal imbalance without if there's no lack of emotional connection with the partner negative body images and then there's disorders of sustaining sexual acts when you in males when you can't maintain an erection or in females there's two conditions we will talk about one is called vaginismus the other one is called genito pelvic pain disorder and finally disorders of orgasm we will talk about premature ejaculation and inability to attain orgasm this is common in females conditions associated with sexual dysfunctions it could be related to psychiatric 
problems, medical problems, most commonly diabetes, respiratory, surgical procedures, and let's take a look at erectile dysfunction. This is the persistent inability to attain and maintain an erection sec uh, satisfactorily okay, for sexual intercourse. This could be psychological or it could be due to a medical condition. The most common condition is diabetes. Now, there is something called the stamp test. So what do we do in the stamp test? Basically, we take a roll of stamps and tie it around the penis. During the REM stage of sleep, there is usually an erection. So when there is an erection, the seal, the stamps would break apart. So they would break apart. That means this is not a medical problem. It's a psychological problem. Then there is another test which is done in the lab. This is called nocturnal penile tumescence plethysmography. So this is done in the lab and it's not done at home. Some causes for erectile dysfunction include vascular problems, endocrine problems, substance abuse. This is seen in around 50% of smokers. Social situations reduce attraction with if there's no privacy. Relationship issues, morbid jealousy. Psychological, usually depression, performance anxiety. All of this. The management for erectile dysfunction is to correct the underlying condition if possible. If there is some medical problem, correct that. And sex therapy. Usually, the couple is asked to come. This is not done alone. This is done. Uh, this is at least advised to the couple together. They can start with non-genital sensate focus. They would perform sexual act without touching the genitals or any sexual areas. Such as they would do uh, get they would involve in kissing, hugging, etc. If this is successfully done, they would go on to the next step where they would go for the genitals. But there's no penetrative sex. Next, they could try this. They would insert the penis but without any back and forth movements. And finally they can do it with back and forth movements. If this does not work, you can go for drugs such as Viagra, Sildenafil, which increases nitric acid, nitrous oxide production, which will cause penile vasodilation. And this is usually avoided in people with heart problems. Next is premature ejaculation. So this is ejaculation which occurs shortly after penetration or shortly after starting the sexual act. This is usually very common in young people due to overexcitation. When there's multiple or different partners involved, uh, this is very common. And the way that you would treat these patients is through sex therapy. It's called the main way is start stop therapy uh, technique or stop and go technique where they would stimulate the penis with the hand and just before ejaculation, they would stop. Repeat. And the third time, they would allow ejaculation. The other type that they can try is the squeeze technique, where they would stimulate the penis, and just before ejaculation, they would squeeze the glands penis, preventing ejaculation. And you repeat again, and the third time, you allow ejaculation. If this does not work, you can go for an oral SSRI, because when we learn the treatment for uh, the treatment chapter, we will learn that uh, one side effect of SSRI is decreased sexual uh, activity. So you cause a longer refractory period by decreasing the libido and the sexual activity. But, uh, next is something called penetration disorder. This is the name that we use now. 
Early it was called vaginismus. This is when there is involuntary spasms of the pelvic muscles causing pain during intercourse in a female. And the most common cause is anxiety of performance and less vaginal lubrication. So the problem here is insertion of objects is not possible or it's very difficult and painful for the person, usually associated with uh, histories of sexual abuse. They may also be contributed by fear, such as females thinking her vagina cannot accommodate the penis and thinks it might hurt. There is another type of disorder. This is purely psychological. There is no muscle contraction, but the mind presents with pain during sexual intercourse. And the treatment is sex therapy. So these are called Kegel exercises where they would exercise their pelvic muscles. They would pass urine, stop midway, repeat. And psychologically, you need to win her confidence. Don't think your vagina is too small. Put your finger into the vagina, followed by two fingers, you gradually go through this process before you go to the penis. Graded sexual activities. Such as you ask a woman to look at her vagina through a mirror, then use her fingers to penetrate the vagina and different types of sexual positions. Lubricants and female on top. These are different types of treatments which can be tried. And finally, if that does not work, you can go for Hega dilators. Female orgasmic disorder, dysfunction. This is when women fail to reach orgasms usually due to a lack of trust or lack of privacy. And this is a very common thing, fake orgasms. The treatment for this is maturation training, such as increasing the trust, or you can go for something like a clitoral stimulation with vaginal containment. You use the penis, you insert the penis, and then use your fingers to stimulate the clitoris. 